Elizabeth Clare Prophet preaches the everlasting gospel and brings to you the true teachings of Jesus Christ and the illumination of the scriptures by the Holy Spirit. We long to reach the rock that is higher than I, as David wrote, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. How can we fly to thy heart, O God? How can we draw down and be that which thou art to the good of our fellow men? So thou hast ordained. We will not complain of our impoverished consciousness. We will not recite the I wants, but we will know I shall not want, for the Lord is my shepherd. Within me, without, the beauty of the electronic presence of God is upon me. So we are complete in this moment, and so we are poised on Horeb, or in the mountain to hear the Beatitudes. And we listen as God unfolds before us the understanding of the chain of hierarchy ascended masters and their teachers and the gurus beyond and where our christ self becomes the voice of the one teacher and yet where we meet and know the master who has come to touch us in this hour so that we might indeed unlock the fullness of that christ potential within us yes god is in us but who has the key who is the one who will fan the fire for the quickening that the whole house be filled with light? We long for that union. Let us go back thousands of years and see the love of the disciple for the master and what truly is this transfer of light. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah unto heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord, the I am that I am, liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. Here we find the acceptable disobedience to the master, to the guru. Elisha says, I will not leave thee. I will not depart, neither from thy presence, nor thy vibration, thy joy, thy heart, thy light. I will be in thy oneness. Elijah is testing him, and he is responding with the intense ruby fire of the heart that has been quickened by his master. So they went down to Beth El, which is the place where God is. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on, and fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off, and they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle, the full power and authority of his office, and wrapped it together. He concentrated the vortex of energy and smote the waters and the waters of Jordan. They were divided hither and thither so that they too went over on dry ground the fire of god descending in you can have the power over the elements if you pursue with diligence a path that has been carved for hundreds of thousands of years in this system of worlds and it came to pass when they were gone over that elijah said unto elisha Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. That spirit of which he was speaking is the great causal body that is above each and every soul. 
And that causal body is unique for you. It is unique for the Buddha Gautama, for the Christ Jesus, for Saint Francis, for Mother Mary, for the great masters of the Far East, because the causal body is built upon the words and works which are cumulative of all previous incarnations. And therefore it is written, one star differeth from another in glory, in the glorying of God. Whatever you do through your heart, head and hand, through your seven chakras, hour by hour, incarnation by incarnation, is separated as, th as though by a cream separator. And that which is bright and shining, of goodwill and infused with love, rises. It is light. And it actually separates into the vibrations and frequencies of the seven rays that you see and five secret rays in the fiery core which you do not see. Twelve gates to the city. As we express ourselves day in, day out, we are either sending forth the quality and vibration, the feeling, the thought, the action, the works that are of the light, with motive pure to the glorying of God, or we are building a castle upon the sand to the glory of the lesser self, the synthetic self, whatever you wish to call it, that not self that sets itself up as the tyrant over the tender soul that is desiring to become one with that spirit. Elisha's soul is speaking, not his ego, not his pride, not his desire to be a great spiritual prophet or leader. His soul is crying out, my Lord, I cannot live without you. Let a double portion of thy spirit, thy causal body, the momentum of all that is holy within thee be upon me, that I might go forth as your vessel and work the works of God and continue your mission. The great desiring to embody the spirit of the master. This is my idea of wholeness and my reason for being and the reason for my being here. The concept of the fusion of yourself with your own reality, your Christ self. And then you're walking the earth as the instrument of the one who has sent you. Not only the father and the son have sent you, but a particular master and teacher. Those masters so involved with the evolution of mankind, so concerned that the hour is late, that we have such a short time to claim that flame of freedom, that mantle of Saint Germain, and establish it for the security of the nations, for that physical platform of evolution which we need. Our society, our economy, our structures of government, our education, and so forth. Here we stand at the very point of this turning of ages. Elisha was at the turning of an age, and it is the turning of an age when one son of God ascends. And when those who come after him take that mantle and go forward, the age continues. And when those who come after him do not take the mantle, then it drops. And there is no continuity in heaven and on earth of that hierarchy, that ongoing transfer of the authority of the word. We are all in this moment, in this hour. We are coming into the union with our God, our inner true witness. And we recognize that there is one beyond us who has internalized the quality, the vibration, the virtue, the work of God that is ours for the mastery, ours for the pursuing. This is how I see heaven a vast grid of light and geometry, the crisscrossing of lines of starry bodies. And at the nexus of the crossing of those lines, that point of the master, the presence, the consciousness that is able to quicken, enliven, and bring us to that consummate reality and understanding of who is the I am that I am where I stand. I know this I am that I am is not sterile and I do not exist in a vacuum. I know that I am clothed upon with light and identity and I am an individualization of the God flame. Who am I? What is this I am that will manifest through me? 
for the blessing of all I know and for the saving of this planet from, from another round and era of cataclysm and darkness. I must be about my father's business. I must be about the business of my I am presence. But what is that business? Everywhere I go, people want to be healed of the confusion, the fear, the anxiety, the not knowing what should I be doing today. And what we find, Jesus said to his disciples, Lord, how shall we work the works? And what did he answer? He didn't give them a whole list of assignments. He said, believe on the one sent the same tie that bound Elisha to Elijah must bind our hearts to that beloved inner Christ and the one who personifies that presence to us. It is a bold request, not merely a portion of thy spirit, but a double portion. Elisha is bold. He has been emboldened by being with Elijah, who himself is strong in the Lord, humble before his God, and not unwilling to be challenged by the worshipers of Baal. And so Elijah says, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. Elisha must be ready now. All of the forces of his being must meet at that consummate moment. Will he or will he not see? Because through the eye is the conveyance of energy. This is why we are taught to meditate upon the I am presence, to meditate upon the law of God, to raise the sacred fire of the Kundalini because by the inner sight, what we see makes a channel to it and back through the eye comes the entire momentum of the vision. This is why visions are important. What you perceive of God is what you receive of him. I am certain that you know when you have a new perception of God, a new awareness of the angels, the archangels, the light descending, when you see if you have had the joy of seeing your I am presence face to face, the whole house is enlivened and quickened. One glimpse is worth a thousand words. It is the knower and the known you have fused with a new level of understanding. And if you are diligent, you do not lose it. It impresses itself upon you for all the days of your life and the tests which must follow. And so it came to pass as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. The chariot parted them, but Elijah went up in a vortex, a whirlwind of sacred fire, the ascension coil. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, which is to say, as the original translation is, my guru, my guru, my teacher, my father who is the manifestation of the all father to me. The chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them into pieces. Because he had seen that ascension, he could no longer accept his clothing, his consciousness, his level of awareness, he took them off. He knew that by comparison, he was not clean or whole. He wanted nothing more of the old self. He wanted to ascend with Elijah. And this is the mandate of the ascended masters that we come now into that vortex of their whirlwind of energy, that we catch the upward draft and move with them and realize that because they ascend, we can ascend, that is to accelerate light in our temples. We can have more of God because they have cleared the way. It is the law of hierarchy. It is the law of the descent. 
He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Which means, where is the momentum of the mighty I am presence? Where is the power of the mantle? I call for it, I demand it, I claim it, I have seen him return to the heart of God. And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. He had received the mantle and the authority, the same, to divide the waters, the command over elemental life. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. And so they acclaimed him as the vessel of the master. It is my great joy to part the veil for you so that you might understand what is the meaning of the ascended master. What is the meaning of your own spoken word? How much can you claim? How much can you expect to receive from Saint Germain? or El Moria, or the Archangel Raphael, or Mother Mary. How close dare you approach. Here is Archangel Michael, the great deliverer of the people. We approach him in the recitation of his mantra, Lord Michael before, Lord Michael behind, Lord Michael to the right, Lord Michael to the left, Lord Michael above, Lord Michael below, Lord Michael, Lord Michael, wherever I go. I am his love protecting here, I am his love protecting here, I am his love protecting here. The master Saint Germain, the master of freedom, the one to whom we go when we are so frustrated by injustice, when we desire to take a stand in our community, and when we know we need God's help because the powers that have brought about injustice are too great for us to deal with. The Master Saint Germain initiates you in the violet flame that will cleanse every cell of your body and heal all your diseases if you give it. Let me tell you what his promise is. He says if you will serve the flame of freedom, the ritual of freedom, the violet flame, if you will serve that light with me, I will guarantee you that you can, it is possible for you to make your ascension in this life or in the next embodiment if you have leftover responsibilities and karma and dharma to complete. That has to do with Saint Germain's great causal body, his star, which is that tremendous violet flame sphere, a gigantic violet flame sphere that fills the whole earth. It contains the matrix of the Aquarian age, even as he in, in his embodiment of, as Francis Bacon contained the mind, the nucleus of that mind of Christ in science for the modern age. Saint Germain then is the open door to the liberation of our souls, to the mastery of the seat of the soul chakra, to the balancing of karma, to transmutation, and to those works we must accomplish in the name of freedom. Beloved Jesus, the savior of our souls, saving us to pursue his path of individual Christhood, never fails. The most tender, the most loving, the most powerful. He is set apart and without peer and yet instructs us that the path of the ascension is for all and he does not have an exclusivity in divine sonship. Beloved El Moria brings us into alignment with the first ray of the will of God. Without this master and his disciplining of my soul and correction and going after me at every single point of any manifestation of the ego or karma, I could not be here today. I owe my life to these masters and I want you to know that your life can become transformed by understanding truly 
how sweet, how present, how sincere, how determined they are to help us if we will only allow ourselves to be helped. El Moria is a very special friend who initiated Mark Prophet, and Mark Prophet initiated me and was the instrument then of my receiving the mantle. The mantle of Mark Prophet was given to me in the hour of his ascension in 1973, but his training for the previous 12 years was a full preparation for that hour. And yet he left me to go through many tests, to descend into hell, to wrestle with darkness, to come again. The masters want us because it is cosmic law to work out our fiery destiny. They do not interfere. They do not pamper us. They do not do it for us. They give us the teaching, the tools, the love, the tremendous presence. But we get out on the ice and we have to skate for ourselves. We have to make it. And they let us fall down because we have to fall down. We have to know how to fall down and how to get up again and how to keep going and how to feel in the soul and in the chakras that it really all depends on us. And we never become some sort of a favorite son where we can indulge ourselves or think because now we have a master, we're going to live a charmed life. It is not so. The closer we come to the masters, the greater the responsibility we find for our individual destiny. When you have a friend as El Moria, and when you really know him, and when you come to the supreme value of your life, all I can say is, as for me, I gladly lay down my life for El Moria. But it is the taking up of that life again, because we do not die for the masters, we live for the masters. We live for their work because they show us a profile of God in their attainment. Who can know God except in the I am that I am individualized in the master? This is the great secret of life. This is the joy of finding the ascended masters. Because there is nothing left of the taint of human consciousness that could distort the initiation. They are ascended and therefore you can trust their service to you and you can begin to trust yourself again understanding the honor of their presence. The goal of the ascension is the goal of your life. It may seem far away or impossible, but I tell you in the twinkling of the eye of God, the last trump of your human karma will sound. It will be cast into the sacred fire. The age is moving on. You will see in the next 30 years what a difference the light makes, the Aquarian master Saint Germain makes, and what it makes in your life in the violet flame. We are moving swiftly, and you can put off the old consciousness, the old momentum, as fast as you can understand that you can shake from your being the fear, the animosity, the anxiety, the bad habit, the overweight, you can cast them in the sacred fire. And by love and desiring God, you can achieve a union where you are so that you know yourself as God and you know that God knows you as himself and you know this precious, profound and intense burning love of the beloved and the sense of self evaporates, and yet the sense of the strong self and the presence of God is your new garment and your new identity. This is the joy of walking with the masters. And it's an ongoing path, that perfecting light of God within us. But it is joyous because God does not condemn us. And we are happy when we see something that can go into the flame because in the vacuum, the spirit of God descends and we are a better servant today than we were yesterday. I am here and ready now in the full joy of God to receive you. You know God is the only healer and I am only a vessel and that vessel is my joy and reason for being. Saint Germain has sent me forth to use my chakras and heart, to use these focuses of my hands which he has secured for your blessing. I will place my right hand upon your head and my left 
behind your head. The right hand is the giver of light through the third eye. As you see, so shall it be unto you. My left hand takes from behind at the point of the medulla, draws from you the substance of past lives and records that the great law will allow to be taken. It is not my will or thine, but God's that is done. This light drawn forth is passed through the purple fiery heart of Saint Germain. If you can understand his fiery cauldron, how he, the master, offers himself to you to be the transmutative light. He gives you his momentum of his attainment in the violet flame for you to use for the transmutation of karma. This is the great tremendous love of this master to see this planet and us individually make it. So what is given is given, what is taken is taken, and you are the determining factor in this as Elisha and not Elijah was the determining factor in his blessing. Elijah was willing, but Elisha had to meet the conditions. Saint Germain is willing. Won't you say that to your heart each and every morning when you awaken? God is willing. The master is waiting for me this day. He is ready to bestow upon me all that I need to fulfill my mission and ascend to God. Oh Lord, use me this day. So let's let God use both of us now in this transfer of light. The preceding public access program has been presented through the assistance of Church Universal and Triumphant, Box A, Malibu, California, 90265. If you would like to know more, call this number or write this address. The Coming Revolution in Higher Consciousness. Listen now to Elizabeth Clare Prophet, educator, author, and authority on the most exciting story of our time, The Coming Revolution in Higher Consciousness. Beloved mighty I am presence, beloved Father, send forth thy light into our hearts, the intense light of thy love. Magnetize now our own twin flame. Let the mighty I am presence of our twin flame and the Holy Christ self merge with our own, that the universal Christ of our understanding and identity might be one in the great spheres of light, where we are, where God is Lord, and the Lord he is God and where we declare together, lo, I am that I am. If you would like to ask a question on the subject of joining forces with your twin flames for freedom, please come forward and speak to me through this microphone. Mother, I'd like some guidelines as to how to recognize my twin flame from a false twin flame. Recently I was engaged and you know, I became aware that there were some characteristics that he had that I didn't think I could live with. And yet, on the other hand, there were many fine characteristics that he had, and it was so difficult to separate from that person. And as I look back at it, I think it was wise that I did separate from him. 
but I'd like some guidelines. Well, most people have a collection of good and bad qualities. And basically, we do decide on our relationships based on uh, what we can live with in a person, what, what we can tolerate given the fact that there is a greater love that binds us. Now, determining who is your twin flame by whether a person has good and bad qualities is not a safe method because the knowledge of the twin flame is very inner and it's almost best to blind oneself and, and stop up one's senses and to follow the flame of the heart. And sometimes outer examination and analysis uh, can be very misleading because people when they are desirous of having a mate uh, you can just observe the animal kingdom especially the males they have all the colors and they strut and they perform and uh, they do everything under the sun to win uh, this uh, particular female and so it's really not the time to judge a, a person in that that period but what we can do is go to the heart of hearts and marriage is such a, a total commitment especially when you're on the path that it, it bears a period of aloneness prayer fasting calling to Archangel Michael to protect oneself from what we are warned of in the Old and New Testament be not unequally yoked together beware of entangling alliances that means entangling alliances with the seed of darkness and so God will tell you if you give him the opportunity to tell you but if you don't want to know because you want this person more than you want the truth then you can get into trouble so you kept your eyes open you said you were honest I love this person but I really can't live with these habits that is wise on two counts it's being honest but it also admits the fact that there is a certain fallacy uh, that many women make and that is they marry someone thinking they will change him after they're married and that never works <laughs> if it does work you can be happy but in fact it's not fair you have to marry a person on the basis of what they are accept them as they are and be ready to live with them as they are and if you can't you're not entering into this contract which is binding upon you uh, in all fairness so if you want to change someone postpone the marriage and change them beforehand <laughs> <laughs> thank you it's a good time to invoke the violet flame with a mantra that you can all memorize very easy I am a being of violet fire I am the purity God desires I am a being of violet fire I am the purity God desires I am a being of violet fire I am the purity God desires I am a being of violet fire I am the purity God desires I am a being of violet fire I am the purity God desires I am a being of violet fire I am the purity I am a being of violet fire I am the purity God desires I am a being of violet fire I am the purity God desires I am a being of violet fire I am the purity God desires I am a being of violet fire I am the purity God desires I am a being of violet fire I am the purity God desires I am a being of violet fire I am the purity God desires I am a being of violet fire I am the purity God desires I am a being of violet fire I am the purity God desires I am a being of violet fire I am the purity God desires When you use the name of God I am you are using the name that God gave to Moses it is the power of the sacred name that releases the light from your causal body which you see depicted in the chart behind me that's your causal body of light your twin flame has the same causal body you and your twin flame have identical electronic blueprints one in the masculine and one in the feminine polarity and so to draw down the violet flame from the causal body of your twin flame you say 
My twin flame is a being of violet fire. My twin flame is the purity God desires. This is a fiat which you make. In the name of Jesus Christ, we call forth the violet flame from our causal bodies for and on behalf of our twin flame, wherever the beloved may be, worlds without end. In the name of the Holy Spirit, we decree. My twin flame is a being of violet fire. My twin flame is the purity God desires. My twin flame is a being of violet fire. My twin flame is a purity God desires. My twin flame is a being of violet fire. My twin flame is a purity God desires. My twin flame is a being of violet fire. My twin flame is a purity God desires. My twin flame is a being of violet fire. My twin flame is a purity God desires. My twin flame is a being of violet fire. My twin flame is a purity God desires. My twin flame is a being of violet fire. My twin flame is a purity God desires. I wish to thank you for being here. And had I come to this Twin Flames in Love three months ago, I would have come to learn how to find him. And I feel that I'm approaching this as wanting to know how to release the stumbling block upon the path. Because I still sense the emptiness, and I, I'm told to learn to release it. But it's so strong that I feel the only way to try and release is the concept of denial, and I can't do that. You're, are you talking about a block to your meeting your twin flame? No, a block on the path of my, my uh, God's will for my life. I sense that I need the twin flame to fulfill that, and I know that I first must fulfill my own destiny before I'll be able to have that. You at least need to establish a strong tie to God, to your mighty I am presence, to the, to the Father. The sense that wherever you go, you can talk to the Father, and the Father hears you. Do you pray to God like that? Yes. Wherever you might be, you, in, in deep reverence, this is not just a casual conversation like, oh God, but it is definitely Father come and talk to me about this problem. This is my problem. Please give me the explanation and the answer. Your decrees to the violet flame, your tube of light, and the calls to Archangel Michael will enhance your union with your I Am Presence and your Christ Self. You don't have to be perfected to deserve or to meet your twin flame. The more perfected you are, the better chances of the relationship but you just said you had to fulfill your divine plan first. That's not true, because the divine plan is fulfilled with one's twin flame. First of all, everyone has to realize that given statistics and the law of averages, not everyone's twin flame is his approximate age, is available, is in embodiment, uh, and is necessarily an adjunct to uh, one's life's calling. Uh, your twin flame could be an ascended master, your twin flame could be a baby, your twin flame could not be born. So we hope that our twin flames may be there, but you have to be prepared, of course, for the eventuality that it is not your destiny to meet your twin flame in this life, in which case the course of action is still the union with God, with the masters, and the raising up and the exalting of the light of yourself and your twin flame, even if the twin flame is not present, because, of course, the reality of the twin flame is not merely flesh and blood. The twin flame is a being who at inner levels is never separate from you at the level of the causal body. What we're talking about is the outer separation that is painful. Now, when it is obvious that the divine plan is not to meet one's twin flame. That doesn't mean that God will not provide a partner, a companion, a husband, a wife. And this person may be a soulmate, a person that you've been good friends with a long time, whom you do care for deeply, or with whom you can get a, a job done, project-oriented. Or you may have a karma that can't be balanced any other way than in a marriage. And that, too, may be fulfilling for the lessons that you learn and for the love you give. 
which is important. So then what we need to call for beyond calling for the twin flame is the divine plan. What is our divine plan and who is it we're destined to be with, uh, to raise a family with, or to do this or that with? So I think that the calls to God and the decrees on the path are the best insurance for the best possible outcome given what we have dealt ourselves from our previous lives for this one. Now you will never attract anyone of worth while you have blocks, anxieties, and all kinds of divisions because you, you'll attract a person like that. Right. And then you'll have two of you to solve the problems of. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you should relax and be joyous because you can be joyous in God and you can have a lot of friends and enjoy a lot of people. And that's the, that's the growth of community. I mean, we have a community here of wonderful people, soulmates, twin flames who are married. And then we have people who are single. And I've watched them grow two, five, ten, fifteen years. They've never married. They've been extremely happy. And sometimes after 10 years, all of a sudden, they reach a point of attainment and suddenly they recognize their twin flame who was there the whole time. <laughs> right, serving in the same community. But until they blossomed and grew and became who they were, they weren't a ready match. But in the meantime, rich relationships between co-workers sharing the life of attainment on the spiritual path provided a tremendous love and support as well as the development of the relationship to the masters. So you never have to wait for your twin flame or soulmate to be fully satisfied in the love of God. And it comes in many ways. It comes through children. It comes through the more mature. It comes in sharing at all levels. I think you should leave that microphone with the absolute conviction that right now you are in love with God, your maker is your husband, and you're happy and complete because you really are complete at inner levels. And that completion must manifest. And you can make uh, any one of the masters the prototype or the image of your twin flame and give your devotion to that master and let him bring to you the perfect one. Thank you. Good evening, Mother. When a woman gets married, she takes her husband's name. I'm interested in um, what the matrix of that is. I was born a Jeremiah. 21 years ago, I became a Peck. Um, the, re <laughs> the relationship ended uh, almost immediately after I delivered our son. and. Um, I have never felt that the name fit. Since I came into the teaching, I've given a lot of thought to names. Um, we think about the blueprint and uh, the name. So uh, I would uh, appreciate the teaching and the understanding on why a woman takes the husband's name and the effect of that name um, on the woman. Well, this is an ancient tradition, and we know that both in the Hindu tradition and the Christian tradition, the man occupies the office of Christ in the household and the marriage. In India, he is the guru. So uh, if that is the case, then we have to be careful in, in choosing uh, a husband and a father to our children that we can respect that person to occupy a position where we are willing to be the one that gives in. In other words, you can't have a hydra-headed beast running a household and every time there's a decision to be made, uh, there's a fight of who gets to decide this one. You have to have enough confidence in your spouse to realize that it is the husband's role to lead and to lay down the law. It is your role to inspire to preach, to teach, and to find ways and means of uh, hopefully uh, encouraging your spouse to adopt the highest recourse. 
But in the end, if you marry, someone has to say, this is the way it's going to be. In any case, it's like taking the name or the mantle of, therefore, that one who holds the spiritual office. So that is fine because a marriage means the twain are one, flesh. So when the twain are one, they should be one in name. Now, the laws of divorce and names reflect the divine law. When you divorce, you may elect to take your maiden name. That is your choice when you divorce, if you divorce. Many women with children retain the name so that they and their children will have the same name. Sometimes when their children are grown up, then they go back to their maiden name. So at this point, it is your choice. You, you are a career woman, you're a professional woman, and your name has become uh, a professional name, which many professional women do not change. Uh, therefore, they are using the name for professional purposes, not necessarily out of loyalty. So it is your choice at this time, and, and whatever you do really is a private matter. Thank you, Mother. My question is, um, could you clarify the difference between a twin flame and a soulmate? You seem to be saying that if your twin flame is not on this level at this lifetime, um, in the meantime you might find a soulmate. And I thought that was just different um, expressions for the same concept. The twin flame is born out of the original white fire ovoid. This is an ovoid of light in which you are created. Mm -hmm. And out of this ovoid of light, I see. which is one sphere, this is in the central sun, this is pure spirit. Mm -hmm. God takes the ovoid and he makes out of it two spheres of, of light. And these spheres, each one looks like the causal body behind me. So if you see, you look at this chart twice, mm -hmm. here's two causal body with the I am presence, the Christ self, and the lower figure. What it means is that out of a single sphere of light came forth two spheres that were, one was the masculine, one is the feminine polarity of, of the Godhead. Descending from this sphere then comes forth the soul that is the counterpart of the spirit. And these souls are called twin flames because they came out of the original single ovoid. That ov ovoid has a unique pattern. It is an electronic blueprint. Only you have it. You have it in the spirit. You have the divine image in which you were made. It's the same image. The same image. No one else in the whole cosmos can claim this oneness with you because you were only born once spiritually. So we came down and now we're in the lower octaves. We're in a world that is uh, filled with darkness, karma, sin. So we make karma perhaps originally with our twin flame. We start out in golden ages with the perfect person, the twin flame. But then there's the compromise. There's this great darkness that has come about, the fallen angels' rebellion. So we get into other relationships or we may have a fight with our twin flame. We start making karma. The karma demands we go back and fulfill that karma first. Karma is always your first obligation. It takes you away from your twin flame for lifetimes. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, in fulfilling your destiny, you make good friends, you have brothers and sisters, you have a, a, an affinity and a wavelength in common with people. And basically a soulmate is someone with whom or alongside of whom you are working on a similar initiation of the chakras. We come into embodiment to take initiations on the seven chakras. Mm -hmm. And let's say in this lifetime we have to master uh, music through the third eye. Mm -hmm. You'll probably be assembled with many musicians. You'll find that you have a, a great uh, uh, friendship with them and you may find someone who is very much a co-worker and a companion with whom you can share that love and there is a blessing that comes from the I am presence of both twin flames, your twin flame and that person's twin flame. And there are groups of souls who have a similar path to pursue. So it almost becomes like what we call a group mandala 
or a group karma. So that's what a soulmate is. A soulmate is someone you can share with. Hello, Mother. I was very interested in the discussion uh, on the uh, sponsorship by the masters of Twin Flames. And I had a couple questions on that. Um, first, you had a, lot, a personal experience with that. And I'd be interested if you could tell me if you had particular ways you found were really helpful of, say, tuning into El Moria's uh, guidance and your relationship with um, Mark. And I was also interested in knowing if you knew if the masters uh, might sponsor couples other than uh, Twin Flames. Yeah, the masters sponsor life streams who are constructive and can c get a constructive job done. And the criterion of a relationship is, can you do it better together than separately? You can achieve some good for God and, and humanity and for yourself together than you have a reason to join forces. Now, when you marry, and I believe that re relationships should be consummated in marriage if they're going to be of any uh, endurance, you do take on one another's karma. And that is the real meaning of the vow at the altar. In sickness and in health means in cycles of karma. So that is the seriousness of a marriage vow. When you look at someone after all else is considered, you have to say to yourself, do I want to share in that person's karma? And karma is circumstance and uh, the type of person that person is and the problems they have or the things they get into, even their career is their karma. So uh, the masters do, do sponsor us. And I didn't uh, ask to be sponsored uh, with my twin flame. What I was, the prayer I was making to God was to send me a teacher so I could do St. Germain's work. And I had come to the conclusion that a person who th believed the things I believed uh, wouldn't be wanted by any man anyway. <laughs> well, I, I really believed that when I was in college. And so I, I took up my Bible one day and I, I read the prophet who said, Behold, thy maker is thy husband. So I realized that God was really my husband, so that really solved my problem. <laughs> And, and I could serve God as my husband, who, who also created me, and go about finding my teacher. And uh, that pursuit uh, was met on the other side by the fact of, uh, of Mark being there, and he being the teacher that was destined for me, and he happened to be the, the twin flame as well. But there is no question that without St. Germain, El Moria, and Jesus directly sponsoring that relationship, it would not have come about. Then you spoke of more than uh, one sponsorship then. In this case, yeah, it took three. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mother. Beloved Mighty I Am Presence, Beloved Alpha and Omega, we call for the Holy Communion of our Twin Flames. We call to the Cosmic Christ, Lord Maitreya, to serve now the Holy Sacrament of the Body and Blood of the Universal Christ, to the soul of our Twin Flame and to ourselves, that we might at inner levels partake of the universal light and consciousness, assimilate it and become it. And therefore, by this very leaven, by this very transforming, transfiguring power of the body and blood of Christ, through him come into union with one another in that perfect love whereby God may use us to save his little ones. <laughs> You've been watching The Coming Revolution in Higher Consciousness with Elizabeth Clare Prophet.
The preceding public access program has been presented through the assistance of Church Universal and Triumphant, Box A, Malibu, California, 90265. If you would like to know more, call this number or write this address. is the coming revolution in higher consciousness. Listen now to Elizabeth Clare Prophet, educator, author, and authority on the most exciting story of our time, the coming revolution in higher consciousness. Perhaps you are familiar with various sorts of healers who come in the name of Jesus. We have wonderful people in the, in the ministry in the United <coughs> States, and I'm certain you do here, who do come and call forth healings that are instantaneous in people. They walk away and they leave their crutches and so forth. The path of the Ascended Master's teachings is not in this manner, so I would like to explain to you their teaching on healing. First of all, the office that I hold is one which involves the bearing of the karma of the evolutions of earth, as opposed to taking on the individual karma of any individual people. When Jesus healed, he often took on the karma or the cause of the disease itself and carried it for that person. Under the Ascended Masters with whom I serve, Jesus and Saint Germain and El Moria, I am not permitted to take on your karma and to give you then the light for the establishment of your physical wholeness. This is a path for the sons and daughters of God, whereby you study the teachings, you apply the science of the spoken word, and you win your own ascension by good words and good works and by the grace of God, who does reward all who diligently seek him. This is the path of individual Christhood as Jesus walked it. So you are no longer merely followers of Christ, but you are engaged in the mighty work of the ages.